Broadcasting from the Any Hour Services Podcast Studios, I'm your host, Mike Wilson, and on this episode of In the House, we're going to be talking about using space heaters during the winter. Let's go. In the House is a podcast about the major systems in the house, electrical, plumbing, heating, air conditioning. This week, I'm joined by Gavin and Shane in the studios. They're the managers over the electrical service department at Any Hour Services. How you guys doing? Doing great. great. That's good. How's the new year treating you? 2021 been good? So far. So, so far. It hasn't been very long. So yeah. it's like hard for it to like screw up. <laughs> well, after I last got, year, it won't be hard to be much better, huh? We hope so. <laughs> I got I got home from my uh, New Year's vacation at my parents and my water heater was gone. So that was a great start. Now, when you say your water heater was gone, like somebody oh, stole it? No, just <laughs> the water everywhere. Oh. No hot water. It was great. Well, your, your years, why'd you say your year's been going pretty good? <laughs> well, Did you just kind of like say, ah, I'm going to lump that into 2020? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. That's a I'm great a attitude. One today, so we're good. Great right, attitude. Tank, tankless or a tank? Uh, tank. Tank water heater. I wanted to go tankless, but couldn't do it. Couldn't do it. Um, resolutions. Are you resolution setters or just like, eh? I've got lose weight. Lose weight's your resolution? Is that because of the the fitness challenge going on at, at, at work? That and. And yeah. it's just like, ah, I, I'm, I'm going to be like lot. everybody else. <laughs> yeah, you I gained ate, a lot. I ate way too much sugar Okay, this last year. <laughs> all right, all right. <laughs> Drowning your pains. Oh, um, yeah. <laughs> what's your goal? How many pounds? 50, you don't look like a big dude. I'm going to lose. Especially 50, when you stand next to me. I'm going to lose 50%. You're going to lose 50% of your body of my weight. body fat. He wants to my body fat. Of your not, body fat. Not weight, fat. So do you know like what you need to like come in at? Like, so I need to come out in at about 11%. So, ish. but I mean, does that, so you don't look at pounds. You just don't even care what you weigh. Yeah. No. You're just looking at percentage of body fat. Yep. So what are you going to do to like get that? Like you're going to pump iron? I've got two, two things I do. Athlete X, which is, it's more of weights and things like that. Okay. And then there's another one that's more cardio. Okay. So I'm going to switch off every week. Wow. Good luck. So. Best of luck to you. Shane, are you a goal setter? Are you a resolutioner? Not so a much. A revolutionary? <laughs> what did I just do? <laughs> <laughs> so Gavin's going to win a cruise, and I'm going to buy a cruise, and we'll both be cruising. <laughs> so your goal is just to go on one. His goal is to win one. That's right. <laughs> but I, I set some goals. Set some goals. If Are you they, don't set them too high, though, then your year goes a lot better because then you don't have to do so much to to accomplish what you set. That's one so, philosophy on life. I guess you could live your life it a that way. Lower and, oh, okay. No. Hey, there you go. I don't set any resolutions. <laughs> See? Same thing. So, well, not exactly. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, ooh, I just yelled in the mic. That sounded like I busted things up. Um, let's see. Why are we talking about space heaters today? I think the main reason we're talking about them is uh, it's cold. Okay. A, a lot of homes have furnaces and other ways to heat the home, but there's a lot of spaces in homes that don't stay as warm as other spots. Is that why they call them space heaters? Because yeah, there's little, spaces little spacey, in homes? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but no, we do come a lot across a lot of space heaters this time of year, um, especially in spots that are maybe in the corner of a room. Maybe you have rooms in a house where uh, there's a lot of windows and the windows aren't insulated very mm. well. Um, people might be working at home, maybe even under a desk. So, so people like to have that heat in a centralized area. So, so it is a really common thing. You come across mm. space heaters a lot. Yes. Uh, when you come across them, are you, since we're service electricians, mm -hmm. are you coming across them because they're causing issue or are you just seeing them more in homes at, at, during the winter? Does that question make sense? I would say both. both. Um, we, we do get calls out because space heaters pull a lot of power and, and they do cause problems on electrical systems. But also as we're just at, at at homes doing other services, you know, you see them quite often. Yeah. And I wasn't quite sure because I was like, I was like, I think a lot of people use space heaters during the winter in parts of the home as supplemental heat, but I wasn't sure. Actually, anybody listening, if you're watching this, whether you YouTube, Facebook, wherever, leave me a comment down below. Let me know if space heaters are something that you use. Do you use them during the winter and why? why? Why are you using them? Are you using them because your HVAC system isn't like keeping the house comfortable? Are you using it because you would rather use those than the HVAC system? I, I don't know, than the furnace, whatever. So leave me a comment 
down there. I'll look at them and say hi if you leave me a comment. <laughs> um, okay, so let's. Uh, th- there's different kinds of space heaters, right? I'm I'm thinking of you've got the electric ones that like make the thing turn red, the little coil. Mm-hmm. They get too hot, they buzz at mm-hmm. you, and you're like, ah, it's not warm yet. <laughs> uh, and then you've got like the oil mm-hmm. um, space heaters. Yep. I guess you could also have like those space heaters that are for the shop that you shouldn't use inside. <laughs> yeah. I got a scar on my arm from like reaching around one of those Mr. Heats. I reached around oh. to like touch one of the other burners and it like, right. It's actually right there. Oh, Look geez, at that. Yeah. Like, and this was, that was a lot bigger because it happened when I was a teenager anyway, but yeah, it hurt a little bit. And then my dad just mocked me. <laughs> it's like, Oh, you're dumb. <laughs> Thanks dad. <laughs> anyway. Uh, so talk to me. Are, are are the different space heaters, are some of them more dangerous than others? I think it depends more, li- more on uh, how many watts they're pulling. Mm. How hot they're going to get <clears throat> is okay. the biggest thing. So. Okay, so uh, <clears throat> talk to me about what makes the what makes the difference then. Or, or j- talk to me a little bit more about why space heaters are, are dangerous and how it ties into your electrical system. So... Electrically, um, they pull a lot of power. So 1,500 watts is usually what, if you go to Home Depot or Lowe's or whatever, most of them pull about 1,500 watts. Even if they're smaller, they're going to pull 1,500 watts. Well, I'm, so, you know, I'm, you're saying 1,500 watts, and I'm sitting here thinking, like, a microwave is 1,100 watts. <laughs> and that's a pretty powerful microwave. Yep. So space heaters pulling more than a lot of microwaves. Mm-hmm. Okay? Yeah. Um, how does someone know how much power their space is there like a, a name plate? Does it say it once the box is gone and it doesn't say on the front of the box? Um, how do they tell how much power their space heater is pulling? There should be a name plate on there. Name should, plate on it. Yeah. It should tell the voltage and the Watts that it's pulling. Okay. So, and they need to look at the Watts. Yes. Okay. Look at the Watts and then you can, you can decide you can look at the Watts and divide that by the volts and then you will get the amps that is pulling. So, on a in a typical home you're going to have about a 15 amp circuit for bedrooms and for stuff. bedrooms and, and things rooms. and usually that 1500 watts what's that pulling 18 shane what was your amps. math on there so if you're looking at homes uh, most homes you'll either have a 15 or a 20 amp breaker the one gavin's talking about is 15 a 15 amp breaker so the way you do that is you divide your voltage in a house is 120 so you times 15 times 120 that gives you 1,800 watts. But in the cold book, it says we're not supposed to go about above 80% of the available power. That gives you 1,440 watts. So that tells us that one 1,500 watt space heater is maxing out your circuit. Hmm. So mm-hmm. if it's really cold in the room, you can't plug two of them in. <laughs> and hopefully your breaker trips if you do. Okay. So um, does the age of the home make a difference like the the condition of the wiring make a difference on how well these space heaters are going to work it can yes yeah so over time things get loose um and loose wires create heat and cause problems okay so. but that being said too just because you're living in an older home it might be just fine too i mean the electrical connections might be great that's something you're gonna have to get a qualified electrician in there to look at and and i go over with you well, uh, before they get to that particular mm-hmm. point of like calling an electrician out, is there anything like what can they watch out for and know whether they're, uh, is it just like, well, you just got to look at the nameplate and do some math or are there some things that they can visually see, physically see, like like what warning signs, I guess, of like whether your space heater is causing issues? A uh, big warning sign, checking the uh the extension cord that comes from the heater to the plug. Okay. Checking if that's warm. Checking the plug itself. Seeing it, just feel it if it's warm. So, why what, why does that matter? <clears throat> if it gets warm, gets hot, burns things. What does that represent though? Like, I mean, what what does that the cable being oh. warm? What what does that mean? That that just means so you're pulling so much so much power. You're gonna have um, the outlet's probably gonna be hot because the wires can't handle that power. And then it's going to heat up the cord too. So things are going to get shorted out Mm. because they're going to melt. A lot of people think that breakers are there to protect you, but in reality, the breaker is there 
to protect the wire in the wall, right? Mm -hmm. You don't want to pull too much electricity. And the reason that is, is because depending on the size of wire, like Shane mentioned, like a 14 or a 15 amp circuit and a 20 amp circuit, really the difference besides how much power it pulls is the size of the wire that's in the wall. If you want to pull more electricity, if you looked at your breaker panel and saw the numbers, the bigger the number, the bigger the wire that's in the wall. And so, uh, and the reason is, is if you want to move more electricity, you've got to have more surface area for those electrons to, to be moving on. And as they're moving, when you try and move more than that wire is designed to friction, heat, and that's where you end up with uh, the potential of fire, right? Mm -hmm. And so that's why an early warning sign would be see if things are warm <laughs> because before they get hot, they usually get warm. Yeah. Right. And then, uh, you know, so if someone touches an extension cord and it's warm, um, is that just like, ah, you're screwed or like what, what is like, what amount of warmth is acceptable? So a lot of times you'll touch an extension cord or the cord going to, and it will feel a little bit warm. Mm -hmm. um, 1500 Watts going through a cord like that will create heat. A lot of times you can unplug your outlet. Um, we go to a lot of service calls where you unplug the outlet and you can see the outlet is physically burned. It's melted, it's discolored. If you ever start seeing that, that's a real warning sign that you should unplug it and have somebody take a look at that. Um, you will feel a little bit of heat if it gets hot to the touch. Um, that's when you need to get a check. But if it's just warm, um, it's, it's usually fine. Besides things feeling warm, are there other uh, visible signs or warning signs that they might recognize just from like using their electrical system. Well, if your breaker trips, that's okay. a good thing. That, that is but a good you, thing. But you know that that's pulling too much power. So it's not, not good to plug it into that circuit. Yeah. So I, I usually would tell people like if a breaker trips, go and reset it. If it trips off immediately, then like there's, there's an issue that you need to address there. Right. Uh, but if it stays on, and it's tripping like frequently, then that's a, that's a sign also that there's something going on. And so I've, I've used, I'm, I'm in a very old home and before I had my furnace replaced, it just was not keeping up with like, you know, heating the far bedrooms. And we had a cold winter, our first winter in that house, <coughs> we put a space heater in two different rooms. I didn't realize it at the time, but they're same both on circuit. the same circuit. And so boom, breaker trips. And I'm like, well, looks like you guys are all sleeping in the same room tonight. <laughs> <laughs> so, so anyway, um, so yeah, so start, especially if you're using a space heater, go unplug the space heater and see if the breaker still stays on. But the thing is with the space heater, if it trips the breaker, it's, it's pulling the most power when it's in that heating mode. So if it kicks off, and you flip the breaker back on, it might not be right back at that high intensity heating mode. And so it might not trip the breaker immediately. So if you're getting a consistent breaker trip, um, then, you know, that's, that's a sign that you, you don't have enough power to supply that heater the way that you're wanting to. What, what are, what are people's options? Cause I mean, they're still going to be cold. They still want to like stay warm from an electrical standpoint. I mean, obviously you could be like, well, cool, get a new furnace and air conditioner, or like <laughs> change your venting, you know? And I think that's the reason that people go to space heaters is because it's, a, it seems like a much more economical Feasible. solution, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So from an electrical standpoint, if they don't want to like upgrade their furnace and air conditioner, um, what are their options electrically if their space, if they need the space heater and it's giving them issues? Well, some of the biggest, um, one of the biggest options is really to run a new circuit. Um, that's taking a wire from the breaker box all the way to that sp space in your house where you need it. There's all the other things you can do. Um, you can look through your house. Like Mike said in his house, um, he had two different bedrooms and they were on the same circuit. You might have other stuff plugged in in those bedrooms that maybe you could plug in somewhere else in your house. It's not going to take that power. So kind of energy management a little bit too sometimes helps. If you're plugging it into a kitchen, you might also have a coffee maker and a microwave and different things. So maybe plug it in a different spot where you don't have as many things plugged in. So you can move the heaters to different spots or also move other electrical components to different spots. Well, what I, what I ended up doing, so the first night we had them sleep in the room, but when I started thinking about it, I actually... I went and got my extension cord from the garage. Mm, yes. And so, cause I can't really plug the heater in somewhere else cause I needed to be warm in that room. Mm -hmm. So I went and I 
I found a different circuit that the that the extension cord would reach to, and I plugged it in so that it wouldn't. Uh, and I, I actually plugged it in in the kitchen so that it was on a twenty amp circuit, so that mm-hmm. it wasn't uh, yeah. on a, a smaller fifteen amp one. But um, and like Mike's saying, that that's a that's a good short term remedy. Yes. Um, Long term, that's not your best situation there. It can be pretty dangerous having that extension cord going through your house. Well, and also, I have to say that I didn't use like one of those little thin braided extension cords. I mean, I had a 12 gauge extension cord Mm -hmm. that I got out of my garage that was like much better at handling the amount of electricity that I was going to be running. If you tried to get one of those like little white two prong thin extension cords, you're going to run into the plug that into a 12 amp or a 20 amp circuit like cool the wiring in the house can handle it but that extension cord is going to heat up a lot more than than that and so that could be Mm -hmm. an issue as well um okay we talked about all those things i mean if someone if you're at home you're using extension cords and you're worried like maybe you think your electrical is older maybe you have these uh breakers at trip or maybe you're feeling some you know the warm wire the warm outlet the best thing to do I, i'm thinking would be call an electrician and have like a, a safety inspection done and would you guys agree because i mean it's yes. not unless you know what you're doing with electrical if you don't know what you're looking for you don't know what you're watching for somebody that can come in and actually do the math like, okay, well, here's why it's happening. You're pulling too much and offer those other solutions. How does someone need to speak to that electrician? Are there certain things they need to say to make sure that they're, you know, making sure they're getting checked what they need checked? Yeah. Um, just pay attention to, I would say how long you're plugging it in for, Mm. how long you're in that area, where you're plugging it in. Um, what are the things you have plugged in while you're, in that area um that's what i can think of really um i mean it's pretty straightforward space heaters are dangerous in the winter because they pull a lot more electricity than that circuit is used to to pulling i mean also i think it's should probably just go over the safety basics of a space heater you want to keep things away from them don't pile clothes on them don't put them too close to things that could melt uh you know those oil ones they seem like they don't put off quite as much like they seem like they're a little bit you could dry clothes on that one <laughs> i don't <laughs> if know if i do them, that don't do it don't do it i'm just <laughs> like but when you wake up in the morning your socks are cold like lay your socks over <laughs> it like don't do that people yeah i do um anyways <laughs> i don't i would <laughs> but, you know, right now. Anyway, so um, any, any other last thoughts on space heaters before we wrap? Well, I think just uh, use the right space heater for the right spot. Um, Explain to me what you mean by that. Well, if you have a kid's bedroom, okay. um, and I sleep in kids' bedrooms quite often, and you have a bed, uh, don't, I mean, so, so space heaters, there's also ones that mount right on your wall. They're permanent. They stay there all mm. the time. Baseboard heaters, something Baseboard like that. heaters, same thing as a space heater. But uh, if you're going to put one of those right by a child's bed and put the bed up to it, I mean, not a good idea. I mean, maybe in, maybe in something like that, maybe that oil heater would be a lot better. Mm. Uh, some of those are still 1,500 watts. They give off good power, but they're not something that if you tip it over or something, it's going to burn your house down. Mm. So use the right heater in the right spot. Okay. Are there any heaters that, like, are the wrong heater for the wrong spot? Like what? Like when you say use the right heater for the right spot, I'm thinking like I guess that's pretty vague, huh? Bedroom heater, like I, I don't know. It's like this space is cold. Grab a heater. (laughs) I guess what Mike's saying is uh, just be careful around. Wait, 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 what I was saying? Come on, (laughs) be careful around any space heater you do have. Uh, Make sure there's not stuff piled against up any uh, against any of them. Okay. Um, If they're small children, I mean, even touching the face of those can burn them really badly. Mm -hmm. So, so be careful around them. Okay. Well, there you go. If you are having to use space heaters, I hope you stay warm this winter. Thanks for listening to the show, though. We'll be back next Tuesday with a new episode of In the House. If you'd like to know more about Any Hour Services, visit anyhourservices.com. I've been your host, Mike Wilson, and you've been listening to In the House. In the House.